take 20 of awkwardly filming myself in Starbucks. So uh, before we get out this video, it's gonna be a little different. We're gonna showcase an episode of our podcast. So we recommend playing it in the background, enjoying the content there. I figure this is a good way to kind of push this kind of new thing that we've been doing on everyone so you can try it out. Podcasts are available everywhere. Podcasts are available. So whether it's Stitcher, iTunes, Google, go ahead, take advantage of that. Um, and we're also gonna do a quick little giveaway. It'll be fun. So comment a question down below for our Mailbox Monday. Every Monday we do like a little kind of question and answer segment. So go ahead, comment down below. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast on any of the mechanisms. You'll be entered to win and we'll pick the winner for the Monday Mailbox Monday next week. So without further ado, let's get into it. What is going on? Welcome to the Fit, Healthy, and Happy podcast. Uh, so all in all with the car, we didn't get any feedback against it, but we listened to it after and it wasn't our favorite sounding, so we're going to try to minimize that. Uh, here we're not in a car. Normally we film them in a car, but we're going to try it in our gym studio today, see how that goes. So hopefully the audio here is crisp and perfect. Uh, I want to make sure this is amazing content. It's very easy to listen to for everyone. So as usual, thank you so much for tuning in. This is going to be a killer episode, bringing up that mailbox Monday. You can count us every Monday. It's released, I believe, 2 a.m. Um, we wake up, make sure it's released, just make sure it's good quality. Nah, nah we have it. We have it queued up, but we're, we've been consistent. We followed through with this, and hopefully, this is something that will brighten up your Monday and that you're able to enjoy. So, without any more rambling, let's jump right into the mailbox let's, Monday. Let's do this. So our first question, and this is one I really liked and one I really wanted to address, I thought it was pretty awesome. So uh, this is from Jeff from Toronto, he said, hey, what's up boys, love the content. I'm just down the street and I'm thinking of getting signed up with you guys and that he noticed we offer both personal training and online coaching. So I guess he's in a unique opportunity because he could work directly one-on-one -on -one with us, but he could also work online. And he said he wants to know which one is best and why, and it's our job to sell them and get them in the door. So that's a, that's a pretty cool question in my opinion. Um, I guess I'll jump into it and I'll let yeah. Kyle add yeah. on if that's all right. Yep. Uh, so for me, I'm a firm believer in the value of both. Um, personal training is fantastic, okay? Personal training, you literally, this is the best. I wish I had a personal trainer, yeah, to be too. honest, because no matter who you are or how advanced you are, someone is watching everything you do. You can't do seven out of eight reps, go, ah, good enough, yeah. like screw it, or lunges, ah, don't want to do it. Someone is literally watching everything. You do a half rep, hey, you're called out, right? Someone is doing everything for you. They're periodizing all your work. They're watching all your stuff. Someone is completely on your case. They're there to make sure you succeed, make sure you're pushing yourself, make sure you don't injure yourself. And most importantly, especially one thing I recommend is, if you start with personal training, you learn a lot about peaking and you have someone to set you up properly and kind of just teach you the ropes, teach you the proper form, put you on a proper periodized program, help you learn those basics. And the thing with this is, this is something you're gonna carry forever in your life, right? Like if you do this, you're gonna be able to teach your your kids one day or your parents or your grandparents, your, your cousins, your friends. Yeah. And this is a skill you hold forever you'll know how to work out this is why i also recommend logging just the same because you kind of learn to attribute values to each degree of food in its own little manner and that in itself is invaluable like that's so powerful and even for me as far as online coaching or personal training in either circumstance we're going to teach you those fundamentals so if you're able to start with personal training, I definitely recommend that. However, if you can't, um, and then I'd say the one downfall to personal training is it's expensive. Yeah. You're paying hourly, um, you need myself or yeah. Kyle to be literally devoting an entire hour of our time to watch, make sure you do everything right. And when I PT someone, I treat them as good as I treat myself. I spend a lot of time on their programming, um, kind of planning out their future, mapping out everything, seeing what is the best weight for them, how we can optimize their performance, how we can optimize their mobility. I really look at something from a completely unbiased outside view to make sure it's perfect. And that's very demanding on time, so personal training can add up and it can be quite expensive. Whereas um, online coaching is a very affordable new age aspect of this. And I, I will say I think online coaching can be as valuable as personal training with a little bit of an asterisk on it. Um, so the only negative potentially is we can't monitor your form as closely. Saying so, um, exercises you should be pretty comfortable with. We have a ton of resources that we've kind of built up over the time. We have a form guide online. Um, we have all this content um, and you'll have direct access to us. So any online coaching client, 
Any exercise, I don't care what it is, film yourself, send me a video, I'm gonna break it down, teach you how to do it just the same over text. Obviously, I'm not there to hold your hand through it, but I'm still gonna take care of you. Online coaching, I'm gonna do all your programming, I'm gonna do all your training needs, and I, everything's gonna be taken care of. So even if you're across the seas and you're brand new, we will take care of you with online coaching, and this is gonna be a fraction of the price. It's gonna be significantly cheaper. And if anybody listening to this is curious at exploring either our personal training or online coaching, you can do that at www.colossusfitness.com uh, that's C-O-L-O-S-S-U-S -S fitness I definitely recommend checking that out and there's a ton of great info there but either way you will be taken care of and it's basically streamlining you to success so when I started I wasted about three years doing dumb things doing wrong yeah. things overtraining, under training not building myself up equally there's so many things you can overlook when you do it yourself and when you have that unbiased third party who myself and Kyle have done this for hundreds if not almost thousands of individuals by this point we have such a good eye for it. It's very black and white for us and we will, like I said, streamline you, streamline you to success. That's our tagline for today. So, um, quick little summary. So ideally, uh, if you have the money and you have the time, uh, go personal training. It's a great route. Um, you'll be taken care of with myself and Kyle. Um, we, we know what we're doing, we've helped a ton of people and we have a ton of testimonials to back that. Personal training can be a huge rabbit hole trap as well. So I'm not saying every PT sucks, there are tons of great PTs that are not ourselves, but it can be hard to find. And I have a lot of clients that have come from big box gyms that really got screwed over, ripped off, like there's some horror stories. One girl that said she spent almost $8,000 trying four different trainers and she, uh, she said the last one had her do 45 minutes of cardio, stretch for 10 minutes and while she was on the treadmill doing her cardio, uh, he'd go talk to girls and that's, that's insane and that's imagine paying upwards close to $100 an hour to just be told to go stand on a treadmill. Like that's disgusting to me. I mean, if you're committing to personal training or online coaching, you're reaching out, you're saying, help me, um, I'm willing, like, like take care of me. And for someone to just blatantly ignore that, and that's the issue with the big box gyms, they'll kind of hire a lot of whoever. And you can't guarantee that someone's gonna care about your success and care, and that's the thing, right? Like. At the end of the day, people always ask why we think we're like a notch above the rest or really good and I'll, I'll say it's because we care. That's the number one thing. Like I said, anyone I take on, I treat as good as myself. I want them to succeed as much as I want myself to succeed and that I know I can keep them in good hands. So yeah, once again, personal training ideally, but online coaching is a great realistic option that you can keep kind of pursuing and continue doing because you'll be taken care of. It's very, very affordable. It comes down to really cheap. It's as low as $125 a month, which is nothing when yeah. you think about it. That's like a gym membership, right? To have someone take care of everything, map your success, and you will literally see like five times the results you will on your end. I, I tell everyone that signs up, like, you know, it's better to invest in me than supplements, some random program here and there, um, any gimmick or equipment, and you'll be taken care of. So really either one we can take care of you. Hopefully that was a little bit of a long answer, but this should provide a lot of info. I mean, whether you're deciding to work with us or someone else, these are things to um, kind of take in. Anything to add or not really? If not, uh, I got a good question for you. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, new so question. Yeah, yeah, that's good, man, you so, said everything, dude. So yeah, here's my question for Mailbox Monday. What makes a good personal trainer and what makes a bad personal trainer? I know you can go off, because I just uh, spent a good chunk of time. <laughs> hey, dude. Let's let Kyle take over. If you got something to say, then say it. Um, <laughs> It's better than interrupting, definitely. But uh, yeah, so I'd say, oh man, like I go into some gyms, like we like to actually, we, we have a studio here in, in Scarborough, Toronto, but we like to go into other gyms just to see like what other people are doing for different types of videos, what trainers are doing, like just what's going on outside of this small gym that we kind of uh, rent out here. But we see so many different things and I'm gonna start off with saying a bunch of the negatives. Um, I'm gonna say uh, ideally like, or not ideally, but when it comes to like these big box gyms and stuff, they're all about just the money, they're all about just getting the people to sign up for let's say 10 months or one year or something like that and they have a lot of pressure from above like the management and the um, head of personal training or whatever they're called to uh, sell these memberships to these people that don't really need it or that can't afford it or um, they're just like really just like money 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 so at the end of the day they just don't end up caring about actually getting the person to see results on top of that I'd say people who just don't look the part or haven't actually lived the part because like the ability you know that we have to be able to help other clients because we've had these types of, um, you know, uh, different 
paths like we've been through it, we've gained muscle, we've lost weight, we've done all that stuff. So a lot of the stuff that we've learned for ourselves, we could apply to our actual clients. Um, so I'd say, uh, I'd say just like, you know, you see a lot of trainers, like not to knock them, a lot of them are overweight, a lot of them look like they've never worked out in, in, in their lives. And then on top of that, I'd just say, just really, really poor form and just like, this goes back to lack of care. I see so many times trainers just um, letting their clients get away with like swinging away like crazy and curving their back on a deadlift and just not really understanding like they probably do understand because themselves they do they won't let themselves like curve their back on a, on a deadlift but they'll just be pretty lazy and this uh this goes back to what josh was saying like he treats every client like uh like him like it's himself lifting and i'm the exact same way so i'd say these are a bunch of bad things and uh, when it comes to good personal trainers i'd say all the times um the, the, the care is the biggest thing. Like I know I'm gonna go back to it a million times because you know people are coming in just for let's say an hour workout. But uh, on top of that, like one of my biggest things that I say to anyone that ever signs up for a personal training package is I'm not just one of those trainers that you know you come to see me for let's say three hours a week and then you're on your own for the uh, other 165 hours. Any personal training package we have, any client that signs up, we guarantee that will help you outside of the gym. So anyone that signs up, I'll be able to help you with your macros I'll be able to help you understand nutritious uh, sorry nutrition and on top of that just give you a workout routine outside and send you some motivational quotes and just you know some reminders for you to get your workouts in on your own so that's the biggest thing is communication as well um, I'd say for for personal training it's huge like sometimes you know that one hour workout or that experience that they get from you is the best hour that they're gonna get all week or within the day so it's just really about making it you know the uh, the best experience you can. So like we like to, at least for myself, I like to really format it in a way that they're always like working towards increasing volume or just like getting better with the movement and then also finding new alternatives to switch it up and make sure that they're not just coming in doing the same thing for the next year, that they're learning new movements and they're able to actually progress. So um, there's a bunch of negatives, but I'd say like majority of the trainers out there are just like finding these weird funky exercises that aren't actually benefiting the clients, like these BOSU balls squats doing bicep curls just to say hey this is a new exercise and uh, letting a lot of bad form slip so that's kind of my rant uh, I don't know just uh, you know look out for it because there are literally so many good trainers and there's so many bad you just got to kind of and that's why we love having the YouTube channel because a lot of people come to us and they say hey I watched all your videos I know you guys are the real deal so I want to hire you so uh, do your research if you're in the you know search for a personal trainer Awesome, you killed it. Um, I'll add a few, I guess. So yeah, th these are all key things, and I think people get very confused about what makes a good trainer, and uh, it, it is very confusing because here's the thing, as, as a client, you're probably someone who's either a beginner and intermediate, perhaps even advanced, and you might not know if what you're being told to do is right. And so a common thing with personal training, and it's hard not to fall in the trap, is that people wanna come in and be sore and get a good workout. Yeah, so that's huge. Personal trainers will just do a bunch of random exercises, come in, completely destroy you, and then you'll go home sore or whatever. That doesn't necessarily mean you have a good trainer, just could mean you're doing a lot of randomness because a lot of routine building is not always going 10 out of 10. You have to understand like, you know, when to back off, when to peak, when to program, what assists what, what to use an accessory, what to use as a primary movement. You know, all these things will kind of contribute to your success long term. Being sore every time, like the main cause of soreness is just new stimulus. So working a muscle in a new and different way doesn't necessarily mean you're having a great workout. Saying so, like you, and being sore is cool and whatever, but that's, that's why you wanna be careful that you're not just doing a whole lot of nonsense and that what you're actually doing is like programmed and important and actually made to be to reach some end goal. So that's one thing I would definitely really push on people to try to kind of see that that's being taken care of. Um, another thing too is like if a trainer, I know a big issue is they won't teach you barbell movements. Usually that's a sign that your trainer's probably pretty lazy. So even I had one client come to me and he paid a lot of money, he's been a son for a while and he's like, let me squat, let me squat. And they're like, no, it's too advanced for you. And I mean, it can be true to some degree, not everyone necessarily can go and do it right out the way, but you can do things to build them up to that, right? You can do like light overhead squats, you can do elevated squats, you can do box squats, you can teach mobility and kind of work to these end goals. And these are some other really important kind of factors that I would definitely look into considering and make sure that you're not locked into some one, one weird ideology of training that 
they think is the only right option. Uh, like if you're only doing, I don't know, jumping movements or only something or other, you need, you need a nice variation through everything if that makes sense. And then I guess my last thing would be if your trainer isn't able to say no to you or kind of put you in place a little bit. Um, like a trainer is an interesting dynamic, right? Like you don't want someone who's just going to be a yes man and say, oh, you're sore, we won't push here. Mm -hmm. You don't want someone who's going to kill you, but you don't want someone who's just going to buy into all your nonsense if you know you're like, oh, I'm tired. And it's like, yeah, you know what, take five days off. Like, yeah. You need someone who's going to push you or someone, you know, are you going to say, oh, I don't like lunges. And they're like, listen, they're good for you. That's why we're doing them. And like, that's what, that's what a trainer is for, right? Otherwise, you go to the gym, you just end Do up yourself. hitting arms and chest every day. Yeah. Like, it's really hard for me to motivate myself through legs and stuff. And it took me a while to get to the point where I could. But yeah, and then I guess the last one, even though we've gone off on this, this should be really valuable to people and even your friends and stuff, is uh, like just, there's a lot of trainers too that will spend too much time making someone feel good. Mm -hmm. So just the same, right? Like for instance, only doing the one exercise they like or just stretching them for 50 minutes. Like we used to go to a higher end gym, I won't name it so we don't call anyone out, but the trainers in there, I know they charge like 120 an hour and they would just stretch someone for 50 minutes. and now. The thing is, I know um, injury prevention or pain relief is a big market, and if that's what you're doing, that's great. But if you're paying to like lose weight and get in shape, and you're really overweight, and you're just being stretched for 50 minutes, and you're not actually working towards that goal of losing weight, that's not gonna benefit you, right? Like you may as well see a massage therapist, not a personal trainer. So kind of know who you're going to for what, and try to make sure they stay in that little demographic. And I guess the last, last one, because we've <laughs> gone off here, is make sure that your trainer has experience. So. Even if your trainer's never had a client before, that doesn't mean they'll be good or bad. Um, you want someone who spent the time to do it for free. So I see a lot of people, they lose a little bit of weight, they've been working out for a year and they start posting about their online coaching. Like that's not someone you want. You want someone who's had time in the field, who's had that experience, right? Like you don't want a grade one student coming out and being like, aha, I'm a pro now, I'm gonna teach you uh, grade one math, right? Like you, you'd want someone who's way past that, who's been like, hey, I already have my university degree here, let me teach you these, these fundamentals and then all the way up to where I am. So you need someone who's either trained people for free or has done it by themselves or has spent the time to really kind of get themselves to where they are, get that credibility, and then that's how you're gonna kind of know that your person's doing their thing. So that was that, that was a good one. Hopefully that was good. Uh, so next one said, they're piggybacking from last Monday's question. Is there something like best time of year to cut or bulk? What is the rule to follow? Oh, that's a good uh, that's a good question. I think we've answered something similar. I'm gonna say yeah, like that's my... why he's adding to it. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. So he was saying like, um, what's the best rule to follow if there is a best time? Yeah. So like you know how we said like usually we're off trend. So okay, like yeah, what's yeah. the common one? I guess is what he's saying. Huh. That's a, that's a good one. I'd say, I'd say a lot of people like are, are kind of like aiming, let's say I'm going to use Canada as an example. Our winter is just about to start. I'd say it's very common and I've done this in the past for many years just to bulk up just because it's a little bit colder, holding a little bit more body fat doesn't uh, kill you because you're not, you know, typically uh, on uh, in, in a bathing suit or in tank tops and stuff like that. Um, I'll probably be bulking up a little bit, like slightly a few pounds, but uh, nothing like I've, I've done before. And I'd say definitely winter's the time where people will bulk up for the first little bit and then start to uh, realize summer's approaching. So let's say maybe March or April um, or maybe even before start to shred down and just really get ready and kind of treat summer as like a, as a competition just to be able to uh, be lean uh, throughout the entire time. And that's pretty much like what I've known to be a, a common trend and that's what I've like always done. Um, it's definitely not fun being super shredded in uh, in winter as well. I'm starting to feel it a bit right now. Like I'm not shredded, but being lean, you feel a lot colder and uh, and uh, it's it's kind of nicer holding a little bit more body fat or at least for my, my, you know, my point of view. So what about you? What do you think? Yeah, that's common rhetoric. And even what I said last time, just do what works for you. Mm -hmm. I'm off season, but I don't care. I feel good with how I do it. Yeah. I mean, whatever works for you, that's kind of the best fitness. It's the way to do it. Whatever dieting style works, you like keto, do keto. You like intermittent fasting, do that. You like flexible dieting, do that. You want to eat clean and you're consistent and you succeed with that, go for it. Like that's, 
that's the best kind of thing. All right, so next one. I need help trying to figure out how to decide how many calories to eat. I've been eating in a 500 calorie deficit, which is about 2,000 calories for me, but I don't lose weight. Do you have any suggestions? Okay, so we gave a stat, so that helps. So I'm 5'8", 153 pounds. It wouldn't fit in the story box. Oh, so they DM'd it instead of putting it because I asked for questions earlier. So if you just go to a website, like let's see, this one I use, freedieting.com, calorie calculator. So I don't know how old this individual is. Let's say 30, I didn't even check at all. Um, they say they're 153 um, in their pounds, male. And then they are, I could have just looked at their bio, I suppose, but I didn't take the time to do that. They're 5'8". And then even these calculators are good because they'll have like exercise levels, like are you doing five times a week intense, three times a week. So let's just put them to three times a week, that's pretty basic. So even this calculator would say their maintenance is at about 2241. Um, and then these calculators aren't always right, it's kind of just using formulas. However, they can be a really good guide. So even in this individual circumstance, they've been trying to do 2,000 calories. So they say they're in a five, um, which is about 2,000 calories. 500 calorie deficit each day. Which is about 2,000. So, so they think their maintenance, maintenance is 25. Is, yeah, so even here, it's unless they're more active, this calculator would argue it could be a little less. Yeah, like maybe if they work out five times, it could be up up to there. Yeah, so it'll vary, but case in point, irregardless of where it is, you can use this as a tool first, and then you can adjust. If you're losing no weight, first thing you wanna double check is adherence, right? So are you logging everything? And here's the thing, you know, a lot of people say, oh, why log veggies and fruit? It doesn't count. Mm -hmm. It definitely counts, it adds up. Anything you put in your mouth, you should track. That's the end of the story. Like, yeah. even if it's 10, 15 calories, like, as simple as it is, if you eat a 10 calorie little thing 10 times, that's 100 calories, right? And, and in the grand scheme of things, all right, if you're only having 2,000 calories, mm -hmm. that's 5% food right there. And that's yeah. some, just a small baby example. Milk and coffee, cream and coffee, um, sauces, mayonnaise, like the more consistent you can be, the more accurate you will be and you'll actually find you'll be able to eat more food because you've been really real with yourself. Um, instead of just chopping, chopping. At the end of the day, if you are doing that and you're still not losing weight, you just gotta either increase expenditure or monitor that better, maybe increase your output, or just continue to kind of tack down. Um, it's hard, it's very, very hard to say this generally, and that's why like with coaching and everything, we have so many factors. We look at food satisfaction, energy level, measurements, weight differential, um, activity level, regulation of workouts. Like We put in a lot of work to try to make it as controlled an environment as we can. There's always gonna be a million variables, so you constantly need to adjust and adapt. But in your case, I mean, I would really focus on upping the consistency and the accuracy and really challenge yourself to see is there a day where you kind of binge out and go significantly over and does that, that take you back? Are you weighing in every single day? That's another big component because mm -hmm. if you win every day, you can take that average. If I weigh in once a week, I mean, there'd be days where I'm 207 and then there'd be days where I'm 215, right? It really varies yeah. on the day. So yeah, it gets a really kind of, poor um, understanding for me of my weight. And that's why I try to weigh in at least five times a week, take the average, come from there, and adjust my calories as necessary. So hopefully that helps. That's probably the best yeah, we can yeah, be for the time it. we have. Um, so last one, uh, just nice and easy, is what have you guys been up to? Like uh, people say, I guess I've been noticing, we haven't been vlogging as much. We've uh, been kind of, just putting out some informational content, we find that's easier for us to produce. And vlogging, it's just getting very hard to film and to find an area to kind of do that. And also, like our, we have a, a good little structure and routine here, and it's not the most exciting to film, in my opinion, right now. Anytime we do a fun event like Texas, we vlog there, and I mean, I'm sure there'll be a ton of great other opportunities to do that, but right now it's been mainly informative, so I guess people haven't known as much. You wanna take this one over, Kyle? Yeah, so uh, yeah, we've just been, like we, we have our morning routine. We got some clients we train in the morning. During the day, we'll focus on uh, just kind of growth and do some online coaching work and just like, you know, the administrative tasks that uh, come with owning a business. Um, and, then on, and then on top of that just lots of training in the evening so we're always working here and there um, on the you know on the business and on the, the growth side of things but you know it's uh, in terms of vlogging there's definitely 
not too many crazy things like we don't want to show you guys hey guys we're just doing our online client work and at starbucks okay. and, and doing our workout that we do every week the same thing so that's why we uh we t we, we should actually be doing a little bit more on instagram because it's uh, a little bit quicker to digest but that's uh that's really it like we've got a couple big things that we should be announcing soon like some projects maybe going on a big trip in february we're not exactly sure yet uh, maybe something relating to tv but uh we won't give you too many details because we're not a 100% sure yet, but we're just gonna keep uh, keep on the hustle and uh, keep uploading at least two YouTube videos a week, two podcasts, and just creating that solid content for all of you guys. So that's uh, that's pretty much it. Anything to add? Um, I mean, yeah, we we've just been really trying to be consistent, um, producing our content here, working really hard in the gym, um, always trying to learn too, improving our craft, yeah. trying to make sure we retain and understand the best info and keep ourselves up to date with our own training and with our clients training. We've been really trying to master our craft there and put our head down and really nail out a lot of good quality coaching for people, personal training, um, continue to do work for our sponsors and keep our YouTube afloat. And then, yeah, we've got some bigger projects in the works that we're really excited to start to announce. And these podcasts have been a ton of fun. We're looking to actively start getting some guests on here. So if you think you have something of interest to add, definitely contact us on Instagram, or you can always email us. And you can also email us questions. Uh, it's always appreciated, or DM. Our email is contact at colossusfitness.com. Uh, once again, contact at colossusfitness.com. Uh, you can always email any questions there, and we can answer them, because these Mailbox Mondays are pretty popular, and they are a lot of fun so yeah i guess that's uh that's that that's it uh this podcast is growing each week we're gaining new viewers we're getting a couple more reviews but a lot of times uh people are asking us how can i give back you guys put out so much awesome content like you know we're doing a lot of this and uh you know there's not too much we get out of these podcasts and youtube videos aside from the satisfaction of helping you guys out which is absolutely huge don't get me wrong but in terms of giving back to us when a lot of people ask all you got to do is leave a review i know you guys hear this probably all the time from people and all on these podcast but I, I really feel like a lot of people don't actually do it so take three seconds you guys listen to us for you know almost 30 minutes now so all we ask is 30 seconds of your time oh wow yeah, yeah it's up to 30 our camera <laughs> cut out I thought we were well yeah. some people too like I've noticed people have actually wanted longer um, podcasts so we'd love to hear like do you want more content I guess mm -hmm. and more time to kind of chill with us and see what's up I mean a lot of it too is dependent on questions we've been getting some great ones but obviously there's been a lot of repeats so we've been very limited there as well so we would love for more unique questions even if you think you have a question that isn't that great it might be amazing like yeah. we, we'd love to answer it and we love having that variety so so once again thanks so much for giving us your ear and seeing us as authority in the space and hopefully you really benefited from this and uh, I guess Guess we'll just do a quick plug if you're interested in coaching and taking that physique to the next level making this the year where you really excel and improve yourself definitely definitely come on over um, we're taking on a few more people we're getting pretty close and pretty limited with the spots we have but for now we, we still have a little bit of availability that I'll probably be locking up in the new year and we might actually close that down to new people so that's something to consider because depending on these big projects we might be pretty full so definitely jump in you can do that at colossusfitness.com uh, that's always like linked in all our medias and you can always just google it or type it in your website so please leave a review if you haven't already and we'll see you in the next uh, episode peace